All right, so uh, in, I don't think we have enough time to do the talk that I was going to do today, which was going to be about the internet and the World Wide Web. And that's going to be a, a, an interesting talk, I think, because it's one of those things that we use every day, but many of us probably don't know how it works. Uh, so we'll talk about these technologies. We'll talk about what HTTP is and what UDP, TCP, all these funky sounding names are, how they work, how they're different from each other. And then so once we understand that, we'll then actually begin writing uh, server-side code and then later using JavaScript's client-side code. Uh, and then we'll have sort of an end-to-end -end mechanism where we can build applications. And so we're almost there. We're going to be building some really cool stuff. Um, but today, what I thought we might do is actually go over the, the very questions that you just answered, right? Um, so this will give you the opportunity that now that you've actually gone through the exercise of attempting to solve these problems, um, you'll be able to you know, understand maybe the mistakes that you've made if or whatever. Um, so the first question was this. So first of all, remember, there's a big rule right at the top that says use consts only. So you were not allowed to use mutation, right? You couldn't modify a variable. You couldn't use var or let. You could only use const. So this was a rule. I hope you followed it. Uh, so the first question was this. Write a function that takes two parameters. So right off the bat, let's do exactly what the directions say. Let's create a function that takes two parameters. Mm -hmm. <laughs> OK. Uh, next one. It then returns the area of, a given tr of the given two inputs, right, of the triangle. The formula is given to you. In other words, look what it says. It then returns. I'm telling you what to do. That's it. That's all you had to do. Yes. Oh, right, right. Sorry. I'll keep reading. <laughs> then it says, if either of the given input values is less than zero, please return negative one. So let's read this again. If either, if. Wait, 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 wait. Yes. Yeah, that's fine too. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, you, you could have also written this with two if statements. If width is less than zero, return negative one. If height is less than zero, return negative one. Same thing, no problem. Other questions regarding this exercise? Yes. Sure, you could have done it. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. I have no idea what you said. I'll look at your code and then I'll try it. Ah, oh, yeah, you're okay. Okay. Uh, do I have other questions regarding the first question on the on the test? Yes. Guys, I can't hear. It. Please. I can't hear you, brother. Talk, speak up. No, it's okay to write it twice. It's okay. Yes. This is just, it's shorter, it's less code, so it's nicer, but that's okay too. We'll accept two of statements. Any other questions? No questions. Good. Let's move on. So the next one, create a PAL function. 
which, given two arguments, base and x, x for exponent. So right off the bat, let's just do that. Create a pal function with base and exponent as arguments. Okay, so we've done the first part. We've created a power function with two arguments. We'll return the base to the power of the given exponent. In other words, we have to multiply the base times itself x number of times. Yes? Okay, so let's first write the recursive case. What is, no, not the chart, let's begin with the recursive case. What is the recursive case? We want to multiply base times, times return base times Okay. Right, but now exactly. This will go on forever. So we need a termination case, a case where this will stop. What is the termination case? Let's test this. A certain percentage of you clapped. <laughs> yeah, so I could put in like 5 and 20. I could put in 1,000. Make sense? So any I made also termination case for if the base for exponent is less than 0. Fine, that's okay. That's okay. Any, anything extra you did is fine. You covered the minimum. Good. Yes? So one or one or, or equal or equal? Less, less, or equal. That's okay. That's fine too. Yeah, it covers the same. Okay. Other questions regarding this one? Yes. Uh, it, it probably won't work. Unfortunately. You understand why, right? Because if you just pass how uh, exponent, it will go as an argument into the base, right? And then exponent will also be undefined, and the whole thing will just be right? But don't worry, the effort is, is, is acknowledged. Yes? The problem is if it's zero, it will do times zero, right? And what's the result? The whole thing turns into zero, right? It's a logic error, but it's okay. Don't worry, I can get a zero. But it's a logical error. Other questions? Yes? Wait, 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 hey. Is it okay that you wrote what? You, so you create an infinite loop. Yeah? Yeah. It's not okay, but you're not going to get a zero. Don't worry. But you will get deductions. Yeah, guys, yeah, hey, uh, yes, sir. Guys, hang on, hang on, hang on. You, sir. <laughs> guys, come on. <laughs> Seriously? Shh. Go, sorry. <laughs> when the exponent is less than one. Yeah, yeah, as long as you terminate properly. If it is equal to one, yeah, but you have to account. Then what did you return? That's okay. Yep, that's fine. Good. Yes? Or final yeah, that's okay. That works. Yep. Yes. Using just this? This is all you did? So you, you just did return 
Uh, no, there's a math object that has a pal function which you can pass to it and it will do it for you. Yeah. So no, the answer is no. Okay, other questions regarding this one? No. Okay, now remember how I asked you like five times, does everyone understand the homework? If you understood the homework, the next one is piece of cake, right? Okay, so the next one, create a function called square. Given a number as an argument, it prints a square of that size, right, using stars. This was the task. So right off the bat, let's make a function called square, which takes a number. So now what we need, what we could use is a function that given a value would return a string with that many stars. Yeah, exactly. You implemented a function like that. I think you called it stars or star helper or something, right? Yeah, it's that really simple function. You just give it like a number and it gives you back a string with stars, with that many stars in the string. Remember that? So let's just implement that, just to have that we can then use later in the rest of our algorithm. What is the termination case for this function? Okay, very good. So now the next thing we have to do is we have to loop n number of times, and for each time we need to print n number of stars. But there is an issue. Exactly. If we were to do this, look. What would happen, other than, other than, I know you know, you answered it. What would happen if I were to call square with, say, a five? I, I want to hear what you have to say. So what would you see on the screen? Exactly. So what would happen is the first time we would print n, which would be five, right? So we would print five stars. n minus one, n becomes four. When we come here, we print four stars. And minus one, we come here, three stars. So what we'll get is this, right? But remember, we want a square. Yeah. So what we need is a second parameter, right? Exactly. So what we need is to create a different function which will take the n, which is going to be sort of the thing that decrements and eventually reaches zero, but then we need a star to know how many stars to print. And this must not change, because we want a square. We want the same number of stars on every line. So what this means in turn is that we then create another function called square, which calls this function.
So consider how this works. Look, look, look. We call square with a five. We call square helper with five, five, right? So when it comes into here, this is five and this is five. Is n, which is this, equal to zero? No, because it's five, right? We then go here, we print how many stars? Five, because this is five, right? Oh. Sorry, one sec. Okay. We then call star. Okay. We then call the same function with the same number of stars, which is five, but this is decremented. That is to say, it decreases by one. So this becomes five, this becomes four. Is four equal to zero? No. So we print star count, which is still five. We go here, we decrement n to be three. Is three equal to zero? No. We print star count, which is still five. You get it? So we keep incrementing five times, and on each iteration, we print five stars. So we get five, 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 five times. Yep. Yeah, so look, look at this function here, right? This is the function you're implementing. If you pass 5, n is 5, right? We then pass that 5 as two arguments into this function. One we're going to change, one we're going to keep so we know how many stars to print. Sorry, I missed your question. Oh, it's okay, but the problem is if you do that, what happens if I pass in 10? If you pass in 5 as the second argument, you're going to print 10 times 5 stars. This goes into this, star count. If you hard-coded 5, it's always going to print 5 stars. So if I give you 10, you're not going to give me a square, you're going to give me a rectangle. You see how that's a problem? I want a square. If I give you 10, it's 10 by 10. If I give you 100, it's 100 by 100. Don't worry, it's, you're not, it's not a zero, relax. It's a nine. Ah, wait, side silencio, por favor. I cannot hear you. Yeah? And you returned what? Yeah, you don't have, yeah, because it's not actually returning anything. That's okay. That's your question? Yeah, that's fine. Don't worry. Uh, other questions regarding this? Yes? Uh, Animasco. Fine. I can, okay. Good? Fine? Other questions? Okay, so uh, the question was, so how do we understand uh, when this whole thing terminates? Why don't we debug? And then you'll see exactly how this works. Right, which you understand. But for those of you who may not, does this work? Okay, so let's try to run this using a debugger. One second. So what do you want to call square with? Five? Ten. Oh, we're going to be here all day. Okay, let's do five. Three? Three? All right. So let's say one.
Okay, can everybody see the code? Yes, good. All right, so we create a star function, a square helper function, and a square function, fine. We then call square. How do I go into that function in a debugger? This, right? Step, look, it says step into function call. Okay, so now look, at this point, n has a value of three, right? This is the value that I've passed to the function, yes? Now let me step into square helper, which will take three and three as arguments. So now look, n has a value of three, star count has a value of three, yes? We then, is n equal to zero? No, let's keep going. We call so lot, so we call stars with star count. Does anyone want me to go into the star function? Everyone understands how that works? Good. So you understand that if I call stars with a three, it will return a text that will have three stars in it. Yes? Fine. So we're going to print that, and what we will get is... So we will get that, right? Okay. We then say n minus 1. So n was 3, n minus 1 would be 2, right? But then the star count does not change. See? So we go into that. Now, n is 1 less, but star count remains as 3. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Very good. So then, we get star, star count. Star count is 3, so we get another text that is 3. And we print it. So we get... Right? Good. Then, we do n minus 1. n is 2, so n minus 1 is 1. So we step into that. Now n is 1, star count is still 3. Is n equal to 0? No, 1 is not equal to 0. Good. Next. Star count, which is still 3. We get the 3 and we print it. So we get... That. We then, again, do n minus 1. n was 1. n minus 1 will be 0. Good. Star count remains as 3. Is n equal to 0? Yes. We return. We're done. We're done. See? Thank you. Appreciate the support. Was this clear? Yeah? Does anyone not understand the factorial function that we have to write in the homework assignment? Does anyone want me to review that? No problem, we know the factorial function. Okay. Let's Yeah. Okay. So if there are no more questions regarding the quiz, let's review the for loop. Hang on, what time is it? Oh, never mind. We got two minutes. Let's just take a picture and go. Home.